We're going to take a look in this video at geometry two. We're going to take a look at some areas. It's really important to understand what area really is. Area, whether we look at uh, any figure, area is really the amount of surface that an object covers up. So all of the surface that's within the borders of this rectangle, for instance, is the area. And it doesn't really matter whether we're dealing with a shape like this first one, which is a rectangle, or a circle. This is still all the area, the whole surface that it covers up. And we can also do a triangle. And still, the area inside is the amount of surface that the object takes up. And so we can calculate we can calculate the area of any one of these figures, uh, but we've got to know the equations that go along with them. And we're going to take advantage of some tools here, and we're going to go through the equations for each one. Um, but also, we're going to do some uh, measuring. And in the last video, we used uh, a metric ruler. So in this one, we're going to use uh, an imperial ruler. I want to take a look first at something like a triangle. Now, how do we find the area of a triangle? Well, there's an equation to find the area of the triangle. And that equation is, we use A for area. Area is equal to the length of the base the length of the base times the height divided by 2. Now the one thing with uh, calculating the area of triangles is this whole height thing. Now the whole idea is we're just going to deal with right angle triangles and so a right angle triangle we use a little right angle symbol which you've probably seen before and that indicates that it is a 90 degree angle. And the whole thing with the base and the height is the base of a triangle has to meet the height at 90 degrees, otherwise it's not considered a height. So in this triangle, we can always think of the base as the bottom, although we could rotate this triangle around and we still need to figure out what the base and the height are. But the base of this triangle uh, at the bottom and now this vertical distance here, this will be the height. And we make sure that the angle here, the angle here between the base and the height is 90. And so because the base and the height are at 90 here, we can use this equation now, base times height divided by 2. It is possible to calculate the area of triangles that don't have a right angle, it still sort of looks like this one does, but let's say it doesn't have a right angle, right? It's still possible to calculate the height, but you actually need to have a perpendicular height. So this, uh, this line that I've drawn uh, in the middle of the triangle, I'll go over it in red, this line here, this line here, has to be at right angles if it's going to be called the height. If there's no right angle between the base and the height, then we're going to have to find another way of finding that area. But for now, let's just deal with right angle triangles. And so I've got my handy ruler here. Um, like I said, we measured in metric in the last uh, video, so we'll measure in imperial here. And we can see if we superimpose the ruler not as, oh, now I'm moving everything. That's no good. There we go. Get my ruler back. It is a little finicky, but well worth it, I think. And so we see here, we're right at this point here. And so we have one full inch to here. And then these are the quarter inches, remember. So we have one quarter, two quarters, and three quarters. So we have one and three quarter inches. Now, please remember, obviously, these diagrams are not drawn to scale. Um, we're just using this as a form of getting another way to, uh, to take some measurements. 
So we have one and three quarter inches. We have one and three quarter inches on the base, and now we have to look at the height. So we can uh, flip. We'll flip it this way, and we want to make sure that it's. Pretty perpendicular there we go and now if we superimpose the ruler here that's pretty good we can see again here is uh, one two three there's one inch and one two three quarters so the base and the height actually measure the same here and we get one and three quarter inches uh, for each of them so um, I'm going to get rid of this guy and now we know that this is one and three quarters by one and three quarters. So we can substitute that in and now we get that the area is equal to the base which is one and three quarters times the height which is one and three quarters all divided by two. And so now this will give us some really good practice with working with our fractions and um, our operations. So in the numerator here, we get one and three quarters times one and three quarters. Best that we convert these to uh, improper fractions first. So one and three quarters is four times one plus three, which is going to be seven fourths and then we have to divide it all by two. And so here, seven fourths times seven. Nine sixteenths, multiplying straight across the top and straight across the bottom, and divided by two. And remember, when we divide by two, any whole number can be expressed as a fraction if we simply put the denominator at one. And so now we have 49 over 16, all divided by 2 over 1. And that's the same as 49 over 16 times 1 over 2. We invert the bottom fraction and multiply. And so now we multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. And so we get 49, oops, 49 over 32. 49 over 32. And it is important to recognize that the number 49 over 32 can be converted. And remember our method for doing that. We know that 32 goes into 49 one whole time. And 1 times 32 is 32. And now we subtract and we get uh, 17 30 seconds left over. So 49 30 seconds is the same as 1 and 17 30 seconds. And the only thing that we should be aware of here is this is an area. And we weren't given, uh, we weren't given uh, any calculations to do other than the area here. And so we should include our units with our answer. And we have inches squared. Remember that we're going to use square inches or square meters or squared units of any kind. Because don't forget, we have two dimensions now. Length and width. So because we have two dimensions, that's why our units are cubed. Are squared, rather. And so in our next example, I want to take a look at the circle. Now the formula for the area of a circle is area is equal to pi times r squared. Now, this number pi, if you have a pi button on your calculator, you should use it. Uh, and remember, pi is a constant and is equal to 3.14 roughly 3.14 units. Um, if you want to use a few more decimals, it would be 3.14159, let's say. But if you have a pi button on your calculator, you should try to use that one if you can. 
So the area is equal to pi r squared. Well, we have to look at the circle for a minute. You can see the center of the circle is marked in red. And we should make a few. Now, I've covered over it in green and made it a little bit bigger because I do want to mark on here that the distance from the center to the outside is called the radius. And if we take a look at the distance of a line through the center like that, this is called a diameter. So the blue line here is a diameter going from both ends or one end to the other of the circle. And the one marked with an R here is the radius. So we see here that we need the radius, not the diameter. And don't be confused because r squared is not going to be the same as 2 times r. Because what we find here is we need uh, the radius, but really when we measure the circle, we're probably going to measure the diameter. So we're going to measure the diameter, and then if we know that the diameter is 2 times the radius, 2 times the radius is equal to the diameter, then we're going to take the diameter and then divide the diameter by 2 before, uh, before we plug it into our calculations here. And so here we have area is equal to pi r squared. The first thing we're going to need to do is to measure our diameter. And I'm just doing this because it is easier to measure a diameter than it is a radius. I've almost got the angle right here. That looks better, I think. And so now I've sort of at the same line as that. And if I superimpose my ruler, my dot's a little bit big there, but I should be able to get it pretty close. And we can see here that we're at one inch and then three quarters of an inch again. So the measure of the diameter is equal to one and three quarter inches. And if the diameter is equal to one and three quarter inches, then we've got to divide the diameter by two to get the radius. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to convert this uh, diameter into a improper fraction. And 4 times 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7 fourths. So our diameter is 7 fourths, and I'm going to omit our units for now. So the diameter is 7 fourths, and so therefore we know that our radius is equal to half of the diameter. And we see that our diameter is 7 fourths. And so 7 fourths all divided by 2 should give us the radius. And we know, again, from the last example, that we can represent a fraction, that's a whole number, uh, with a denominator of 1. And so 7 fourths divided by 2 is really 7 fourths times 1 half. And that gives us 7 eights when we multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. So our radius is going to be 7 eighths of an inch. And so now we will take uh, and substitute into our formula. And we see that area is equal to pi, which is 3.14. That's good enough for now. And then we have 7 eighths of an inch squared. And so you see we have a number of things happening here. We've got a decimal and a fraction. So if we've got a decimal and a fraction, how we want to deal with that is to convert either the decimal to a fraction or the fraction to a decimal. So let's take a look here and let's just deal with our fraction first. 7 eighths squared. 7 8 squared is the same as 49 over 64. And so we get uh, 3.14 times 49 divided by 64. And 
So we can, uh, we can use our calculator here, and I'm going to use uh, 3.14 for pi. So I have 3.14 times 49 uh, sixty-fourths, and that gives me 2.404 uh, so I guess 2.4 is close enough. This gives me 2.4 inches squared. And you're probably going to want to use a calculator to uh, calculate areas when you're dealing with pi. Just to point out, if I had used the pi button on my calculator, which carries an infinite number of decimals, that's lots of decimals, then my area would have been... Um, I'm just doing it here. It would have been uh, 2.405. And so you see the decimal point here, uh, the decimal place there would have been a little different. That doesn't seem very significant, but really it is. Um, so whether you use 3.14 or, or your pi button, uh, your, your numbers might be off by just a little bit, uh, and, and that's okay. And so now... That gives us a good look at circles and how we calculate their area. And now let's deal with the rectangle. And in this case, this rectangle is a square. Uh, we'll verify that by measuring. Uh, but it doesn't matter whether it's uh, a square or a rectangle. The area is equal to the length times the width. And so even though these are the same, we still have area equals length times width. And so we can, again, superimpose our ruler, and we save the easiest one for last, because I know that your brain's probably hurting right now. So uh, we'll end off with the, uh, with the easy one. And so the formula for the area of a rectangle is length times width. And we can see here from our ruler that we're at one and a half inches. So if we're at one and a half inches, 1.5 inches and 1.5 inches, uh, then our area is equal to our area is equal to length times width. So we have 1.5 times 1.5, and this, you know what, we'll take some time and review our long multiplication here. So remember, we have 5 times 5, which is 25. So we write down the 5 and carry the 2. 1 times 5 is 5, plus the 2 we carried is 7. And we need a placeholder. And now 1 times 5 is 5, and 1 times 1 is 1. And remember, we add vertically down, so we get 5. 7 and 5 is 12, so we write down the 2 and carry the 1, and we get 2. And if you look here, there was two decimal places in our question. So we get two decimal places in our answer. And we land up with 2.25 inches squared. So that gives you an idea of how to do the rectangle. And when we go back here, we look at the circle, which we got 2.4 uh, inches squared. And we go back here, where we looked at the triangle, and we got 1 and 17 30 seconds inches squared. So that should give you a good idea of how to find the area of three basic figures, the circle, the triangle, and the rectangle.